sorry, excuse me. And dear Arlen, thank you for writing the beautiful song about my mother. I'm sure you're quite busy, but would you consider coming to Shreveport? That was the Facebook message that I got some six years ago that reaffirmed my passion and changed my life. You see, there are two main things that have made me the songwriter that I am today. One being my father. My father is a pharmacist in my hometown of Los Angeles, and as he should, he is quite proud of the work that he does. He helps heal the sick. He counsels the elderly. He works with people struggling with terrible addictions. He likens his work to doing community service, and I embrace this ideal. I seek to serve my community as well. The other thing, of course, is music. And I grew up loving all kinds of music, rock, pop, swing, soul, jazz. I used to love getting into the back of my father's car on Sunday morning, listening to the gospel choirs broadcasting out of South Central's black churches on the AM dial. Passion by the megahertz. And the songs that really got me woke are the ones that spoke of hope and a united world. The first time I think I remember feeling this way, I was uh, at Temple. <laughs> and uh, we had a very hip canner, Aviva. She has a magnificent voice. And she would sing a song from our beloved Jewish poet laureate, Robert Zimmerman. <laughs> How many years must the people exist before they're allowed to be free? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. I was transfixed by the moral clarity of these words. And I soon discovered that writers like Dylan, Guthrie, Lennon, Marley, Bruce, all had a unique power fueled by an unyielding desire to make the world a better place. And I wanted that power. So naturally, I set out to writing songs of my own. We can all sit down and rewrite the Constitution. Or we could fight it out and start up a revolution. Either way is fine with me. Still, you refuse to see. You're blind to a resolution. You see, songwriting has always defined me. It's my strength, it's my shield, it's my identity, it's my passion. Songs can inspire us, they can console us, they can empower us. They can reach across oceans and connect us. And not unlike Superman coming to save the day, leaping tall buildings in a single bound, the right single is bound to save the day. Faster than a speeding bullet. We can take this song and scream it from ocean to ocean. We could really set it off and start up a big commotion. We take hands, but we have forgotten that love is all we've got. And I believe that I could show you. A gentleman approached me after a show in Amsterdam not too long ago. Thank you for the medicine, he said. You are the medicine man. So is my father. It's how we like to serve our community. And today, uh, I am at your service. I started writing this song as I was watching the History Channel at my piano one afternoon. And they were doing a piece on the Civil Rights era and had focused in on one of the movement's unsung heroes. She was a coal miner's daughter. She grew up in a one-room shack in Tennessee before her father moved the family to Detroit in the 40s, just as racial tensions were really heating up. She had an activist soul. Years ahead of her time, she joined the NAACP after befriending a black woman at her local store. Sarah and she would become best of friends. 
And from Michigan, they would watch newsreels of policemen clobbering protesters as they marched 600 strong over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, March 7th, 1965. Bloody Sunday. And at the urging of Dr. King, that all people of good conscience come to Selma and march on the Capitol in Montgomery, this 39-year-old housewife decided that she would be one of them, and she would not be dissuaded. It is everybody's fight, she would say. Her name was Viola. Viola Greg Liuzzo. Viola's passion was civil rights, and her power came from the tired feet upon which she marched. Break these chains of silence. Break these chains of violence. We will walk these miles and go home. On the final day of the march, she threw those tired feet into her 63 Oldsmobile that she had volunteered to shuttle uh, marchers back from the capital to Selma. And on this particular return journey, uh, accompanied by fellow volunteer Leroy Moten, she was followed by a car full of Ku Klux Klansmen, one an FBI informant. They overtook her car, they forced her off the road, and they assassinated her. She would be the civil rights era's only female white martyr. Hold tight, we're gonna fight, yes I told you. Stand tall, stand upright, you're a soldier. We're gonna take this head on, shoulder to shoulder. I hope you're with me, Viola. I started singing this song at all my shows. I probably sang it a thousand times. And people would come up to me and ask me, how is it that I have never heard of this woman? They were inspired by her story. They were inspired to act. Some recorded the song on their albums. Others shared her story with their friends. And with any luck, their friends would share her story as well. And there it is, the miracle. You see, by me following my passion and sharing her story, we were making the world a better place. Viola and me. I sang the song at this event not far from here. Uh, for the Light of Day Foundation. And a young African-American woman was there for the Asbury Park Press. And she asked me after the show about the song. You see, she had uh, never heard of Viola either. So I told her. The next day, she included uh, an, in the article she wrote about the event, the story of me and my song. It was Martin Luther King Day, 2012. I always have my Google alert set for any time my mother's name is mentioned in the national press. I followed the link to the story about you and your song, and I knew immediately that it had to be about my mother. Thank you so much for honoring her memory and my family. Wow. Viola had five children. Her youngest, Sally, is the one who sent me the Facebook message. And more messages would come from her older sisters, Mary and Penny. <laughs> I spent the better part of the evening crying. Not only for the shared grief and loss of their mother, but tears of pride and joy that my song could reach out and connect with her family and bring them solace. 
They asked me to join them in Shreveport for an event to perform my song that was honoring their mother, and of course I said yes. Uh, many years later in several events, I grew quite close with this family, Penny, Mary, Sally, their brother Anthony. And three years ago, we went down to Selma for the 50th anniversary of that march in 1965. And we stood at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and we gathered at that very place on Route 80 where Viola's light was extinguished, the place where this story began. And I stood at that hallowed place, and I sang a new song. For every step taken on this road, it's called 50 miles. <laughs> 50 miles from Selma to Montgomery. And every mile is etched upon my memory. Over the river, over earth and stone. Looking for a better way back home. Fortune smiles on those who love and do good deeds. Teach your child to dream and give them what they need up and over this mountain. We're gonna push this stone. Looking for a better way back home Cold water running under this bridge Tell Martin we're still marching for him Sweet lady you've been waiting too long It's time you got to sing your freedom song The water line keeps rising and Over the bank she runs Who you fooling now? There's no other way to go Selma stood today I heard it on the radio Fifty years since Selma and Montgomery And still these tears keep welling up inside of me Over and over I pass her on this road Looking for a better way back home Looking for a better way for him Sweet lady You've been waiting too long It's time you got to sing your freedom song Your freedom song Thank you.